The app development landscape is changing. And if you're interested in creating an app for a client, or if you have a business idea and you don't have the capital to hire a developer, you may want to look into no code slash low code app development. Today, I'm going to go over the best no code app builders on the market. I've tried and researched very many, and I'm going to break down the best ones. In order to find the no code tool that's just right, I think it takes a lot of trial and error, but fortunately for you, I've already done that. So when we're going over these no code tools, I want you to keep three things in mind that I kept in mind while I was coming up with this list. Number one, functionality. Does this tool offer the right balance of features for its specific use case and how much customization is available? Number two, ease of use. How user-friendly is the interface? Is there good support? Are there resources such as tutorials and academy, community forums? How active are those community forums? And number three, scalability. Can this tool grow as the software gains more users? Can it be integrated into existing workflows? It's all about finding a just the right fit, kind of like Goldilocks, not too cold, not too warm. The porridge has to be just right. Now, depending on your use case, you may value one category more than another, but the point is to find a tool that can create a solution for you in an efficient, budget-friendly way. So without further ado, let's get into it. If you're new here, my name is Sophie. I go by Code by Sophie on all socials. If you're interested in getting into tech or have questions about anything tech, make sure you like and follow. So the first no code tool that I want to cover is Adalo. And I actually got introduced to Adalo a few years ago and they've come a really far way from when I first got introduced to it to now. And keep in mind, I'm going to be covering functionality, ease of use, as well as scalability. So for Adalo, just to kind of cover some of the basics, this is their website. You can create custom responsive web apps as well as mobile apps. Um, you can use one of their template options, which I think is really great. They have a bunch of different template options from blog to e-commerce to SaaS. And then you can also manage your data inside or outside of Adalo. So if you decide to do outside of Adalo, you have utilizations like Xano or Airtable, and then you can also automate your workflow through the use of something like Zapier. And they also have integration with something like 5,000 services and platforms. So I think that this could be a really great option for someone that's trying to, you know, build something uh, for their business and you know doesn't want to hire a full-time developer and I mean I guess that's the whole point of low code solutions and so kind of going into their ease of use they have really really great support I have heard pros and cons about their community support in terms of questions being answered but they do have something called Adalo Academy where they have video templates here I mean, getting started, like they'll really walk you through, um, you know, and I think it's pretty comprehensive. And they also have a, I just have to find out, look, here we go. Here are all their different like apps that have been created um, and, you know, kind of just talking about what, they, what they've been able to do with the Dalo. Anyways, going back to kind of being able to create something from a template, Let's see if I can, yeah, so if we go here over to app templates, they have a bunch of different use cases, right? Business apps, personal apps, and all you do after you sign in is you just, essentially you just clone the app and then you can kind of hit the ground running from there. Another feature, if you are interested, you can even hire an expert. So they have something called Adalo Experts. They've been certified Adalo to understand and know what they're doing with this platform. And so if you're interested in, you know, you don't want to learn the, the platform yourself, you just want to hire an expert. You can also look at their, you know, Adalo Expert service and, you know, kind of see if that is something that you're interested in. Going 
back. So you can see they have a lot of different uh, things available. You can create just about anything. Um, with Zapier, your workflows are endless. Um, so now I kind of wanted to talk about the scalability. Let's go over to pricing. So you can start for free and you have, you know, you can test it out. And I think that the only limitation here is that you can't publish unless you actually have an active paid subscription. And so for a dollo, as you scale, it gets a little bit more expensive. Um, and so, for example, even if you're looking to use Xano as an integration, you would be paying $160 for a dollo. Um, and keep in mind, this comes with limited app actions. I'm still kind of unsure what that means and how quickly, you know, like let's say, for example, let's say Instagram was built on a dollo. Uh, what does what qualifies as an app action? I'm still kind of fuzzy on that whole idea. Um, but like, so for example, if you went with this team option and you see Xano integration, if you go over to Xano and you look at their pricing, you have to keep in mind that not only will you be paying for a dollar subscription, but you'll also be paying the monthly subscription for Xano. So all in all, I think that Adalo is a great option, you know, if you're not looking to scale something that's too big, um, if you have limited resources, but I think it's a great option for beginners. The interface is pretty intuitive. You can, uh, you know, just start from a template. The templates are, you know, with drag and drop freeform builder. So it's really, it's really easy to kind of catch on and you can really hit the ground running here, but you just have to keep in mind that when it comes to scalability, you might run into some roadblocks in terms of like, is the pricing really worth it? Um, so yeah, just keep that, keep that in mind. The next tool on the list is glide. So Glide essentially transforms databases or spreadsheets into progressive web apps. You don't get the option of creating native mobile apps. You're going to be getting progressive web app, meaning that it will adjust to the device that you're currently using. Um, it's essentially a way to interact with your data visually in a pleasing way. Uh, you, you can sync up huge amounts of data from Google Sheets, Excel, Airtable, you can access it via URL or QR code. It's not really made to be published on app stores. So that's something to keep in mind, but this is something that could work really great as a SaaS, a software as a service, or maybe a short term visual internal solution um, to track something within the company that you're running maybe not something that you are particularly creating to be um, like a widespread solution, but maybe something a little bit more tailored for a personal business solution. Um, like I said, it's not a native app, so you're not gonna get native features like push notifications and it's mainly uh, ran or designed to be run on a browser. There are, similar to Adalo, many, many templates available, and you also have many different integration options, such as Zapier, um, to be able to automate workflows. The user interface is also very intuitive, so it's kind of easy to kind of hit the ground running. And like I said, it, there are a bunch of different templates that you can use. So like, for example, you have an inventory manager here. Inventory right. management is the- Okay, I did not mean to do that. Uh, you can preview what this looks like, um, right? View data, you have your different data table. So this app or this platform is really data driven. And if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I believe initially it was only used with Google Sheets and then it kind of um, evolved into being more. Look, applicant tracker. So. It's a great option for, you know, anyone that might be interested in creating a SaaS. I see this as a great option. It's not going to be something that, you know, will be able to be published to app stores. So keep that in mind. 
but it's a really quick and easy, you know, solution for people that are trying to, let's say you have a process within the workplace or with your business and there's a lot of manual, you know, or paperwork and you want to kind of automate that entire thing and you don't want to be manually typing things into Excel or um, you have like a huge sheet that, you know, pack of, of reports that have to be, you know, kind of compiled annually. This is a really great option because you're really just looking to be able to take that data and make it visually pleasing and kind of automate the entire thing through a software. In terms of scalability, they also have a free version. These are the different data sources that are available and um, you know the different users, how many users you get, private users. Um, and they also have an enterprise option. So let's say you kind of grow beyond the needs of this and you can get in contact with them to make a solution that works best for you. And you can see that you get, you know, more data options, you get, you could get SSO. Um, so the features depend on which plan you, you kind of have, but I think Glide is a really great and easy way to create a solution with little to no capital. So this is going to be number two on my list. And last but not least, Flutterflow. So Flutterflow of all of the tools that I've covered today gives you the most customization, gives you basically, I think is probably like one of the best options if you're trying to create a mobile app solution. Remember I said every solution or platform has its pros and cons and depending on what your use case is, I would recommend one over the other. So. With Flutterflow, you can build two iOS and Android versions simultaneously, which I think is amazing. Um, you have Firebase integration, API support, animations. You can export your code. So essentially when you export it, you're not bound to only using Flutterflow. Uh, it's low code, so you do have a lot of customization options. Um, it's not completely no code. So, you know, their mantra, build once, deploy everywhere, which I think is pretty sweet. And they also offer more components that are built versus ready to go templates. So I think that they do have some ready to go templates, but you'll mainly find like, you know, different components that you can integrate into uh, the app that you're trying to build. In terms of ease of use, so the learning curve is a lot steeper with Flutterflow. They do have good documentation. Uh, they have a pretty active community. They're constantly getting new features and new releases. So they're, you know, you're not gonna be working with something that's out of date. It's, you know, pretty well maintained, I'd say. Um, and they have, like I said, great tutorials also online. Um, not just on their website, but like on YouTube, they have really great tutorials. Look, and they're like, this is how you create a travel, a travel app, build your first app. So I think this is a really great option for someone that's looking to build a mobile app and they want it to be available on iOS store as well as, um, for Android, uh, devices in terms of scalability, this also fares pretty well. If we go over to pricing, I mean, we're talking $70 a month or, you know, depending on what you get, they also have an enterprise options here. Um, depending on what your database offering is, but I think that this is honestly, in my mind, really great GitHub integration, source repository integration, one click localization. Um, and they even have, uh, I think that they have, oh, okay. I, this is just essentially comparing what you get from the different versions. So yeah, honestly, I think that this is, this one's really perfect. What are we doing here? When we said showcase, I thought they were going to give us some examples of things that have been built. Um, but this is, this is a really great option for those that are interested in creating a mobile application. Um, look, it, it's a native, so you can native. It'll create a native application also, so you can send push notifications, um, which is something that's not available if you were to create a progressive web app, for example. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the only downside for Flutterflow is the learning curve. 
However, you look at all of these innovations. However, you can learn it. It might take a little bit more time. Overall, I think it's a great option, like I said. Um, so, very great option. If you have a particular use case and you're not sure which one to choose, drop a comment below and I will get back to you and comment on what I think would be the best use case for you. And I'll catch you guys next week.